Well, my start point today for this overnight journey to London is Rotterdam Central. This version of the station was opened in 2014, although the station lettering and the clock were preserved from the original 1957 station. What a nice touch. The station itself is served by classic and high-speed trains, trams and the Rotterdam Metro. And it certainly looks very sparkly with its Christmas decorations. And as I make my way inside, it's worth noting that because the ferry departs at 10pm, you actually could be starting this journey from anywhere in the Netherlands, indeed, from even further afield. I'm travelling on my interrail ticket, which is very well suited to this mode of travel, as onward travel tomorrow in the UK will also be covered by my ticket. But more of ticket options and prices a little later. So no doubt voiceover man has been showing you the delights of Rotterdam Central. And here I am, and here I am outside the Eurostar check-in desk, people going in there to go to London. And uh, yeah, I'm going to be in London tomorrow morning, but I'm sure you see the title of this video, I'm not going on Eurostar. No, it's no trains for me, well a couple of little trains. I'm going to go from Rotterdam to Schiedam and then pick up the metro to take me to Hook of Holland and then from there I'm going to be on the Stena overnight ferry to Harwich. And yeah, I'm looking forward to this. I've, obviously I've seen a few other people do it on the uh, YouTube so it looks quite fun. I've got myself the cheapest possible cabin. It's, it's very much a budget trip. Certainly compared to that Eurostar, it's probably a bit cheaper. Um, certainly booked in as far as advance as I booked because I'm also running on an Interrail ticket and I'm getting some discount from the Interrail ticket for my um, overnight ferry. So yeah, more of that from Voiceover Man, no doubt. But right now, let's just have more of a look around Rotterdam before uh, we press on and see how it goes. And whilst we watch a few trains, let's get right down to price. Obviously, everything depends upon your situation, but right now it is tea time in Rotterdam and I am scheduled to arrive in London at 9am tomorrow. Now, I booked my Stena passage three weeks in advance, but in the winter months you can often book a passage up to just a few days before the sailing. And with Interrail discount, my ticket was less than 100 euros. That 1728 departure for London on Eurostar, if you booked it three weeks in advance, would start out at around 75 euros. So that certainly isn't a bad deal either. Although, with that arrival time into London, it would mean that any long distance onward travel is probably not feasible. So a London hotel would be needed. There's also a rail sale deal if you don't have Interrail. And booking three weeks in advance overnight travel from London to Hook of Holland, which includes train, ferry and a cabin, is currently showing at £102.70 for an individual. But remember though that a cabin can sleep too. So if two of you shared the cabin, the individual price would fall to just £80. Right, that's enough talk. Let's get this train to Shidam Centrum. It's rush hour, so it's a busy one, but it's only one stop. The metro lines are well signposted at Shidam, and what we need is line B to Hook van Holland. Five minute wait for the uh, the metro out to Hook Van Holland, and it wasn't as easy to get one as I thought it would be, as uh, the English part gave up on the machine very soon, and then there was a huge load of uh, Dutch choices, and luckily a lady just helped me buy the ticket. So four euros fifty, and I'm off to Hook Van Holland. One thing I failed to notice at the time is that the Metro will in fact just let you tap in and out with your credit card. So I really didn't need to faff about with the machine buying a ticket at all. And here's our Line B train and once again it's going to be busy on board but by the end of the line the train has emptied out quite a lot. Well, it's a miserable wet night here at Hook of Holland, but the terminal is warm and welcoming. 
It's only 6.30pm, but I'm informed boarding will start at around 7. This is very handy as it means you can get settled in and also take a meal on the ship well before the actual departure time of 10pm. And there's even some cool models of Stena ships to look at whilst we wait for the check-in to open. I've actually got my room pass from the lady at check-in and I can get my bag down in my room and uh, get myself comfortable and then uh, go for a little tour around the ship. She gave me a map, which is handy. And um, yeah, and then I'll, uh, I'll send us around and we'll have a look at the ship. It certainly is a long walk, so if you have difficulties with that, I'd certainly let Stena know ahead of time so they can organise a ride up to the ship's entrance. And the lift pops me out on deck 9. My cabin is just above on deck 10, so let's go up and have a look. Right, so here we are in the room, using this GoPro, and the other one's on charge. Always have two. That's what I've sadly come to learn on this. Place to hang out. Ladder for the upstairs bed, we won't be needing that. There is the upstairs bed, but I should be taking downstairs so I don't have to clamber around. Handy little bedside table. And then all my stuff, which I shall come back to in a minute. And the toilet. Looking pretty good actually. Absolutely spick and span. Yeah, and hopefully that there shower is going to uh, wake me up before I go-go tomorrow. And whilst I'm waffling on, um, some people are interested in this kind of thing. I've been travelling with this rucksack and I've been out for 10 days. It does come with a handy little rain cover, which is good. A Sainsbury shopping bag, just in case I buy some uh, stuff that needs to be carried. And then boxes for your GoPros, hat, irreplaceable rail map of Europe, little notebook, some cosmetics, and then two bags of... Uh, of clothing. Uh, obviously all starts off clean, now all the dirt is in there and the clean's in there and uh, eventually it'll all be dirty. And there's my coat hiding the telly trying to get dry and that is the room. Back on deck nine is the posher restaurant area with waiter service. There's a bar to the left and to the right is the self-service restaurant. I shall be there in a bit after we've had this walk through. Beyond the restaurant is the main reception with some additional luggage storage. There's also some fruit machines and another lounge area. There's an extensive duty-free shop which will open once we have started sailing. And then next up is the Stena Plus Lounge. This is available for an extra £25, but given I shall be asleep for most of the way, I decided against it. And finally at the end, there's another little bar with a games room and the cinema, although I doubt many will be paying the €8.50 to enjoy the movie tonight. I will go out and investigate the outside decks, but when I've got my coat on, right now it's time for something to eat. Well, the burger was okay and it certainly filled a corner and then I had a very pleasant time relaxing in the lounge whilst I finished my wine. Sorry, no beer this time. And as it was 9.30pm and a departure was fast approaching, I returned to my cabin for some more lairs and then went outside to watch the final loading. This overhang's a lifesaver, it's absolutely teeming down out there. But we're about, I don't know, 20-30 minutes away from leaving, so it seems a shame to uh, 
come off deck now. I've got my big coat on again and my woolly hat, so we'll just hang around here and um, wait for it to leave, I suppose. And then to bed. Actually, I've got to give the uh, ship its due here for the uh, passenger experience because there's, um, you go down and you're on deck nine and that seems to be the only place where you can uh, sit out or stand out and then you can go up to 10 and now I've gone up to 11 as well and there's a little space, look, there's seats, it's all proper. But anyway, I think the, uh, the lorries have all finished loading so I don't think it's going to be that long now. I, uh, I don't think they have to like wait until it's 10 o'clock, it's not like a train, everyone's on, everything's done, let's go sort of thing. Well that's definitely a ramp going up there, so it looks like uh, 20 to 10, we could be in business here, we might be leaving in a minute. And then there's time for one last look at a passing Line B metro train, and then we're away. The ship has to do a complete 180 degree turn to exit the port, and uh, it doesn't look like anybody's packed their basketball for tonight's crossing. And there's something wonderful about these first few minutes as the ship slowly gets ready to hit the open sea. Right, my fingers are starting to turn blue up here, so I'm going to start heading back down into uh, deck 10 and I'll get all comfortable. Uh, but yeah, there's, uh, there's the Netherlands. And when we wake up tomorrow, it'll be the UK. So uh, yeah, let's turn in. Goodbye, Netherlands. Right, to get down to my cabin, all I have to do is drop down from deck 11 to 10, and then to the main outer area on deck nine. Then it's a walk back through the public areas to return finally to deck 10 and my cabin. I think I've got to admit that if I wasn't making YouTube videos I would have been in bed about an hour ago. Because of doing this I stayed out there in the cold and the rain and it was really magical looking at all the lights disappearing and I think that's sort of a, a lesson for life isn't it? Sometimes you put a bit more effort in and you get a little bit more out so uh, you know there's your Tuesday night wisdom from Johnny Hoover Travels. Anyway guys I will see you all in the morning. I slept really well, absolutely brilliant. The, the weather out there on the sea last night was very good, uh, but the boat was so stable and my room was so quiet. Uh, yeah, I was out like a light, a good seven hours sleep, brilliant. And the shower, that was great as well. So uh, yeah, full march to the Stenham Britannica. I shall, uh, I shall come and use this route again uh, whenever I need to, because uh, yeah, it's, it's been completely trouble free and um, just nicely nicely laid out room and um, excellent facilities. What's not to like? And I suspect that may well be my train in those carriage sidings waiting to do its first run to London. Incidentally, on this crossing, they reported they had issues with the passenger bridge, so unusually we were asked to leave the ship on a bus. And just to remind you, this is not usual practice, but it all went very smoothly. Right, well, that says docked. I think it's time to go and see if I can find a cup of tea. Back inside and you can start the day with breakfast, but it was a bit early for me, so I just had a quick croissant and a cuppa. My plan was to have a proper breakfast at 9am when I arrived into London. We were informed what deck to go down to for the bus, 
and staff are on hand to direct us to where to stand. Oh, and the sight of a couple of cute passengers reminds me to tell you that dogs are accepted with foot passengers on this route and you are allocated a dog-friendly cabin for the entire journey. All the formalities were completed really quickly and I got to the railway station at 6.40. Now, the next train to London was at 7.28, so that's going to be a decent wait here, but you might be very happy with that extra time if there were lots more passengers and the border checks took much longer. And in comes a pair of Class 720 EMUs, fresh from the carriage sidings, and also fairly fresh from the factory too, as many of these units were not put into service until as recently as 2022. Now these Class 720s have a top speed of 100 miles per hour or 160 kilometers per hour and are standard class throughout. They are configured for high density commuter service and whilst this is an empty train now it is likely that all the seats will be taken by the time we get to London. And whilst we may all end up packed in tight, as it's a modern train it does have accessible areas and an accessible toilet and also plenty of power supplies both 3-pin and USB. And looking round the cabin there's a reasonable amount of luggage space but not as much as an international traveller getting off a ferry may possibly need. And popping in an airline seat here, well legroom is tight but there is a small sturdy tray table and after all this is a high capacity commuter train. Right, brand new train, very tight loading with a 3 plus 2 configuration but you know that's what it is, it's a commuter train. I'm going to sit over there in one of the two seats basically because I think by the time we get to Liverpool Street this train is going to be rammed. Yeah, the uh, passport control and security was fine at uh, Harwich, breezed through, a little chat with the fella and uh, here we are. I, d I do think this is a great service. Um, it's, uh, it's highly recommended by the man in C61 and I tend to agree with him. If I needed to be over in Holland at reasonably short notice, then with the availability of Eurostars at the moment and the price, it would be very difficult to get there in, in any sense of reasonably quick. But with my Interrail ticket, I can get across from Exeter to Harwich very quickly and very comparatively cheaply and then straight across and into Holland and likewise going the other way so I think if you're riding on certainly on an Intrail ticket but really any kind of ticket because you can do sail and rail as well then there's a lot to be said for this route a lot indeed and soon we're rattling through Essex on this gloomy December morning looking out at the Stour estuary And at Manning Tree we leave the Harwich branch and join the Great Eastern Main Line which will follow all the way to London. Shenfield marks the easternmost point of the Elizabeth Line, a clear signpost that we are now close to the capital. The next stop will be Stratford. And at Ilford we pass the extensive Alstom maintenance facilities. We are now approaching London Liverpool Street, where this train terminates. And here we are into London on time just before 9am. And I've had a very relaxed journey and I feel well rested and ready to face the day. And here we are at London Liverpool Street and it's just turned 9 o'clock. So 9 o'clock in the morning and basically into central London. So. There you have the little trip from Rotterdam all the way through to London Liverpool Street. I uh, hope you enjoyed coming with me from yesterday and today. 
and if you have enjoyed it then do consider liking and subscribing as I release a video like this every Friday with the odd bonus on a Monday too. But in the meantime, from London Liverpool Street, I'd just like to say goodbye and thank you very much for watching. And if you haven't already, why not take a look at my trip right across the middle of the Netherlands from Zwolle to Den Haag?